Hey, welcome back everyone. Today I thought that we would focus on watching a video together. This video called Every Opportunity that I found on YouTube. And I want to highlight it because I think it's a perfect example of what a school might look like if they're in survival and crisis mode all the time, and what a school might look like if they're promoting learning brain. And let's just get into it and I'll explain what I mean by all that. Did you see that? Why would somebody do that? Okay, so it's really sad to begin with, right? You can see that. The kid wants to say hello to a friend, and the guy just ignores him, doesn't even make eye contact. And then what the student said actually makes sense. Every student, when something bad like that happens, every student wonders, why did that happen? And their answer is always the same. It's always, there's something wrong with me that caused this guy to react that way. Children have very egocentric ways of thinking, and so everything always has to do with it's their fault, they're the one who caused this thing. And this is where, if this happens over and over again in a school, these micro moments stack on top of each other to build a very solid foundation of insecurity and worthlessness. Please go into the classroom, no talking, quietly. Hey, Ms. Merida, how you doing? We need you inside. How do you think that makes us feel? I forgot my number. What's your name? Jordan. What's your last name? Carter. All right. Go ahead. See, and so it's not even just what you say, but it's the tone. I mean, you could clearly tell that this cafeteria person was so annoyed and, and bothered and burdened by this student. And again, like if I were that student, I would just feel like I am such a little piece of crap for forgetting my number. I don't deserve anything good to happen for to me today. Or I would be thinking, what's wrong with me that I can't remember to bring those stupid things? School is hard enough. Come on in, sit down quietly at your desk and begin writing. This kind of stuff just makes it harder. I said quietly, please. Who's talking? Okay, so you probably picked up already again that in this survival school, all they care about is that children just behave well and don't cause any tr any trouble. And look, the teacher's sitting at her desk doing her work. Maybe she's like stressed out about getting ready for exams or whatever. So she's like concerned about her own things. And then she's just having the students do their own work quietly and independently at their desk. And the only thing that matters is just that this paperwork gets done. Not that people are having fun or learning, or maybe they're learning indirectly, but the most important thing is that all these things need to be accomplished and done in a very quiet and well-behaved way. Is it you, Sophie? Don't let it be you. Don't believe me? Sophie. Please just watch. I'm not up here for me, I'm up here for you. Pay attention, okay? Now somebody answer me. Somebody needs to answer me really fast. Every time we're annoyed or yelled at, or silent, the the teacher takes away what's possible. No horseplay, no running, and especially no talking. Moment Can by moment. Ms. Garrity, your students' behavior yesterday in the lunchroom, it was terrible. Next time, silent lunch. Did you hear that? Stay in line and catch a bubble. Okay, she really did say catch a bubble. I've never heard that term before, but apparently it's this thing where you make students like put air in their mouths and that way they're not allowed to talk. And typically it's done with toddlers and in a fun way to kind of get them distracted and not uh, be tantruming and not be talking so much. But clearly it can be done in a very harsh way too. I'm not playing. If this is education, we're in trouble. Bye, Miss McGarrity. Frederick Douglass said, once you learn to read, you'll be forever free. The way it is now, two of the three of us will never be able to really read. It doesn't have to be this way. Hey, Jordan, how you doing? Good. Good. Everyone we meet throughout our day can make a difference. I've been waiting for you to arrive. Let's stop right there. There's two great things that are happening. Um, the first is that the school bus person starts the day by just saying, hey, Jordan. So they know people by name. 
And that immediately feels good because everyone wants to be known for who they are. And this is where I really, and this is why I really focus on this whole idea about being known as so important for therapy and healing. And then the other thing that I love is that this principle says, I've been waiting for you to arrive. So that really conveys to a student, you're so valuable that I've been thinking about you even when you're not in front of me. Auditive news. Good, how are you? Great. Hi. Hi, Jordan. Bye, Jason. Good morning, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How are you? Good. Go ahead and put your number in. Talk with well, us. Not at us. That's okay. I'll look it up for you. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. All right. Have a Teach good us day. what we need to know. That's how we get smarter. Well, good morning, Sophie, Janicia, and Jordan. And when you talk with us and teach us, give us bigger and bigger words. Now what I'd like you to do, children, is turn around and converse with your neighbor and discuss where the mother might have gone. Words that we can use to read and understand. She is praying for eagles. Okay. There are two great things happening here. The first one is that the teacher is teaching by letting the students discuss among themselves. So they're actually practicing critical thinking with each other and learning to communicate their ideas very well. But the more important thing that I really love is that this teacher's sitting there, not at her desk doing paperwork, but sitting there just watching the students learn and grow. And she's beaming with pride and satisfaction and delight at watching what they're doing. Now, if I were a kid, I would be so happy to perform in front of her because every kid needs that level of attention from an adult that eggs them on to do things that make them proud and make adults proud. So she hunts at night. And that will take us places we can never reach without you. Remember, we're entering the learning zone. Now, how can we show our respect to the children and teachers who are working? We can walk quietly. Yes. Okay, let's stop right there. Um, what I love about this is that this teacher is actually practicing executive function. Instead of saying, we're entering the learning zone, you need to be quiet, which is just a direct command without any critical thinking, she says, we're entering the learning zone, how can we show our respect for other students? And that immediately makes the, the prefrontal cortex do some problem solving. And then the student obviously comes up with the answer of like, we need to be quiet. And why this is so important to highlight right now is because the prefrontal cortex is, is actually the part of the brain that can help regulate behavior. And in the first version of this story, everyone was just focused on keeping kids quiet. Well, in fact, if you keep practicing prefrontal thinking and making that part stronger, kids will naturally have more ability to control their behaviors and behave properly. So you'll get to the point of getting really well-behaved students, but you get there through strengthening their prefrontal cortex, not just by telling them what to do. Okay, kids, so what I'd like you to do is continue writing your narrative, documenting your emotions, if you were the baby owl and your mother abandoned you in the nest. I love that part again. And, you know, they don't even talk about what this teacher's doing, and they just talk about big words. But the fact is that the task is a social emotional task. How, do you, how would you feel if you're a baby owl abandoned by your mother? And so the students have to wonder about what that would be like and, it, and then they have to come up with emotional words. And I think that this kind of social emotional intelligence is actually the foundation for good behavior, conscientiousness, morality, and good citizenship. So ultimately, this school will still get well-behaved, compliant students, but they'll also be happy about doing it, and they'll do it because they care about their adults and the other students around them. The first school might end up getting well-behaved, compliant students, but they'll do it begrudgingly, and they won't do it because they love people. They'll do it because they're afraid of punishment. What can you do? Learn all that you can so that you can challenge us to be our best. You would have stayed and assisted them in whatever they needed. Share yourself with us and show us how to share ourselves with others. Give us courage. Give us compassion. Help us find our own voices so we can become who we are meant to be. Why would you want to silence us? I love that ending. It said something like, give us the courage and compassion to ultimately become who we are meant to become. 
And the way you do that in the best way possible is by seeing who they are in each and every moment. And when you see them and know them in that way, then you're already nurturing that seed of who they're going to become. So just to conclude, the best way to create a learning atmosphere is to actually create safe relationships where children feel like they are valued, they are known, they are supported, and they are prized just for being who they are. And then additionally, you want to be practicing developmental skills like executive function, planning, and social emotional intelligence. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if it is or isn't and if you have any other questions. And please upload other videos that are just as inspirational as this and then we can all discuss those as well. Thanks for spending some time with me again. Take care.